This story is a look back at four young men who decided to get together and try to make a difference in their community. Greensburg, Indiana is a relatively small city about an hour southeast of Indianapolis. Our birthplace main claim to fame is the tree growing out of the courthouse tower. Kids in this town are around each other for a number of years. The four I want to talk about are Steve Doles, Chris Croy, Bob Blankman, and yours truly, Daryl Martin. By junior high, we were already in the same classes. We sang in choir together and played in the band. When we all moved to high school, the same was still true. But in the summer of 1972, an important event happened. Explo 72 was an evangelistic conference sponsored by the Campus Crusade for Christ. It was held in Dallas, Texas from June 12th to June 17th with a nightly gathering in the Cotton Bowl. Its goal was to gather 100,000 high school and college students together to train them in personal evangelism and to encourage attendees to seek some form of Christian service career. Billy Graham spoke on six occasions during the event, including the final event, which was a public eight-hour-long Christian music festival on Saturday. The event drew an estimated attendance somewhere between 100,000 and 200,000. Steve and his older sister both attended. He came home motivated and started learning some of the songs on the guitar. Chris recalls Steve honoring him one day and said, Here, sing this part. That seemed to go well, and they combined to get Bob to sing an added part. Chris says it was a one-note harmony, but that would soon change. Bob tells about working on harmonies for wedding song in Mr. Wilson's math class, although Mr. W wasn't very pleased. At this point, I come to the story. Steve tells of sitting next to me in Mr. Hayden's history class and talking about needing a bass player. He had me come over to Bob's house where all three of the other guys were present. They played me a couple of songs from the Explo 72 record and asked if I would be interested in joining them. I could tell there was something special here. The group was now set. Soon thereafter, Steve and I went over to a music store in Columbus one Friday night where we bought my bass amp and guitar. Rehearsals now began. We took turns gathering at each other's homes. Steve had the foresight to know we would need several songs. He also arranged outfits for all of us. Our first public performance was February 27, 1973, at the band concert. We did Love Song. We did it again for the next day for the Honor Society induction. And almost immediately we started getting requests to perform locally. Steve's mom had the foresight to keep a journal of our appearances. Over those next 18 months, we did about 112 performances at many churches and events in the area. With two Catholics and two Protestants, we were embraced by all denominations and youth groups. June 26, 1974 was a big day. We were off to Queen City Records in Cincinnati to cut a record. Up early and had all the songs recorded there before lunch. Bob, Chris, and I went to a diner while Steve stayed at the studio to produce the mix. When we got back, it was mostly finished. Now it was time to get the outfits on for press pictures and cover shots. By August 7th, the albums were ready. The Greensburg Daily News even gave us a little nod. We knew we were all going to different colleges, so a free thank you concert was planned. We booked the high school auditorium and spread the word. Saturday, August 24th was our final official performance. 
As the college years progressed, we got together occasionally, but we really got together for each other's weddings. Here's Steve, Chris, and Bob singing at Letha Joy and My Wedding. It's always tough to know if you've made a difference in the ministry. You plant a few seeds and you move on. We did get a lot of nice letters and mentions in the newspaper. Sometimes I see that it was a blessing to us as well, and we're always grateful. 